I'm Kay Bess, and this is The Beehive. Women in voiceover, the voices of the fairer sex that keep the wheels of commerce and creativity moving in this country. Voices you hear every day, but names you likely don't know until now. Hello everybody, my guest today in the Beehive is the one and only Larissa Gallagher. Welcome to the Beehive. Thank you. Lovely to be here. Well, I want to tell you a little bit about Larissa first before we get started. Larissa uh, plays the character of Laguna Blue in Mattel's Monster High, which you can find on DVD and also as a web series on YouTube. Video gamers will likely have heard her in the online video game L Sword and also in the animated web series Stan Lee's Cosmic Crusaders. She also plays the role of Julia in the award-winning video game Firewatch. And she also, I know, has some more games coming up, but we are bound by non-disclosure. So we'll talk about that another time. But anyway, I'm very happy to have you here. So, mm. so yeah, so we've known each other for just a couple of years, mm. but, but fast friends. I know. I feel I like, say. yeah, some people you meet and you just click to straight away. And yeah. that's what it felt like with you. So yeah. Yeah. it was lovely. I agree. <laughs> Tell me how you first got into voiceover. How long you got? Uh, <laughs> About so, 45 minutes. Excellent. All right. So let's take up 40 of those minutes. Okay. No, long story as short as I can make it. I actually started out as a dancer, as like a ballet dancer. And then I got to a certain point in life where I decided that food was more important <laughs> than starving myself to fit into a leotard. Uh, so I, but still loved the stage and so went on to doing musical theatre and studying theatre, etc. And so I would say my very first voiceover job that I didn't even really recognise was probably actually when I was around 22 or something where I played a singing Christmas tree. So I was at the, in, the, um, in the department store sitting in a separate room and kind of talking to kids and singing. As were, you, this, were you singing Christmas carols? Singing Christmas carols with them. Um, but majority of the time it was really hanging out with teenage kids who had been forced to come into the city with their parents <laughs> who just we used to just kind of sit and chat. So one could say I've been doing it kind of since then. Yeah, for a long time. For yeah. a long time. Yeah. And plus I'd done speech and drama classes and stuff for a long time. But officially, you know, I did, I did a smattering of uh, work in Australia as well before I really realised I could do that. But I was doing, you know, voice matching character voices for, um, you know, things like Tiny Robots and... Um, Bob the Builder and oh, okay. yeah, and Thomas the Tank Engine and things like that. But again, I love Bob the Builder. It was good. It was fun. <laughs> so yeah, so didn't really intend for that to be what. Like, didn't always voice over. It was just kind of something that I was doing that was part of my theatre and acting and musical theatre. Right. And then I moved to the US, and I happened. I had made a voiceover demo, but I never did anything with it. And so I moved to the US um, not for the purpose of acting but to meet or to be with my now husband. And he, we had done some voiceover stuff for invitations, for parties and things. And then so he, inventive. Just, so it was just, <laughs> I didn't have my green card yet. I wasn't allowed to work. I had nothing to do. Um, and then, yeah, and then he happened to, he went for a run and heard my voiceover demo because he'd taken my iPod oh, with him. Oh, that's funny. Just randomly and then came home and was like, you need to go and do this. And that was about six years ago. Okay. So I would say I kind of went headfirst into voiceover as a career. Oh, maybe like, maybe like, you know, seven or eight years ago, but it probably like everything kind of started turning started around. It became yeah. more of a full time career as a, as opposed to a let's see how this works. Yeah. About six years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What would you say in that short span of time, where voiceover has been your your main focus? What would you say was the best job that you've had so far? 
the most fun, the most enjoyable, for, for whatever reason. Yeah, that's interesting. I would say, yeah, different, a couple of different jobs for different reasons. I would say that the Stan Lee Cosmic Crusaders was probably a very big highlight, even though we only ran a few episodes and, you know, it wasn't broadcast on national television, blah, blah, blah. But for me, I think... A, because the character was American accent, so it was a lead character mm -hmm. in an American accent with Stan Lee, yeah. who is the god of all superheroes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, apologies, DC Comics, you guys are great too. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so in that world, so that was kind of like sure. an achievement that I never really thought I'd be able to get in such a short amount of time. That yeah. was excellent. Another one would be a video game that I've been working on that we're not allowed to talk about. Um, but for various reasons, that was kind of another big jump I felt in my career yeah. and have loved every minute of working on it and everything I've been able to do. Yeah. So that's been wonderful. And then, yeah, and sometimes it's the other, probably the biggest one is like I've got a really great unsung hero job where I do telephony. So like every single day. I have work that comes in that's just you simple, you know, thank you for calling, blah, 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 for reception, press one, or whatever right. it is. And right. that's, yeah, that's been going for maybe like a year and a half now. And okay. But, you know, that's kind of like that's my bread and butter day to day. Sure. And so even though it's not sexy and exciting, it's what makes me go, I am a working person because yeah. this needs to be done every day yeah. otherwise... You know, so that kind of makes me feel like I get to do a nine to five job in something that I love. And I occasionally also get these bursts of like, you know, the Character spectacular. Work and, yeah, yeah. The, spe the, the, the more glamorous. More glamorous, We, we would say. That's right. And still we don't have to wear makeup even as glamorous as it might be. Indeed. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Tell me, do you have an experience that you could talk about that was sort of like, oh, wow, I hope that never happens again. Uh, you know, sort of your worst moment. Yeah, so when my very first day working as Laguna Blue on Monster High and I knew that I got in the role, I originally auditioned, I had no idea what I was auditioning for or anything like that and then I got the role and I was uh, taking over the role from the incredibly viciously talented Laura Bailey and so I kind of was walking in feeling this sense of responsibility to really make this character as good as as if not better for the fans and everyone who, you know, because people get linked to voice actors and sure. roles and, yeah. and you don't want to ruin that for them. But at the same time, it's like, well, now this is my chance to create, you know, to yeah. build on what Laura's role. done. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, but the very first day of recording, there was maybe five or six people on the other side of the glass as well as people that were dialing in. Mm -hmm. on the phone oh. and so the yeah it was kind of like this is my first massive you know kind of this is going to be a role that will last people already know this role responsibility and everyone behind the glass had their own idea of what they wanted so direction was coming Psst. thick and fast and different and do this and try that and blah 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 and it took everything in me to go I'm not a bad actor. This is everyone trying to discover who this girl is with me at the helm. And so it was kind of, you know, it was it was awful and and exhilarating all yeah, at the same yeah. time because holding on to that which happens a lot as you would know in voiceover kind of you have this little thing that gets into your head which is oh, they're telling me to do something different. That's because what I did was terrible and, and right. I need to do it as opposed to, no, 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 they just wanted to have as many options as possible and how great that I can actually give that to them. Right. So, yeah, but for a good eight hours or six hours, I had to quell the voices in my head going, you suck, you suck, <laughs> and listen to the ones going, no, champion, keep going. And then at the end of the day, everyone was like, oh, my God, that was amazing. You know, you're so fantastic. We had such a great day working with you. You can't get – and it's like, <laughs> You walk yes, out and your knees you, buckle. Yeah, you know, exactly. Right? And I went home and was like, oh. Uh, but, yes. Is this how it's going to be? be forever, yeah. Forever. yeah, so that was kind of that – you know, I, it was obviously a happy story in the end, but sure. for a yeah, for a good six hours, it was just telling myself, "Don't listen to that voice," because you were here for a reason. You would not be here 
otherwise yeah. listen to that voice and hold on to that and keep discovering and exploring. So that was good. Excellent many story. More, but... Well, that's, it's a good one though, because there, there you are in the moment, you know, we're yeah. actually in the moment. It's not like you're, it's not like before you walk in the door. All right, Larissa, you know, you got this, but yeah. it's like in the middle of all the direction and it, it, the more people in the room on the other side of the glass, the, the bigger the recipe for disaster. I mean, mm. that's just, and, and so it's, I mean, when you said how many people were in the room, I was like, oh, I'm already eating hives just because it's so, <laughs> it's a horrible feeling. If, you know, if, if an agent calls and says, by the way, you know, so-and-so is going to be on the line for your session. And then when you get on the line with them and they're like, and here's so-and-so the writer and here's yeah, yeah. so-and-so the producer and here's so-and-so the director. Oh, and here's so-and-so the client, you know, mm -hmm. from the, the, you know, from corporate and here's somebody from the, it's like, oh my God, who are all these people? Hi. And then it's like, hi everyone. Hi, Great everyone. to meet you. I'm not stressed at all. And this then you do wonderful. a take and then they say, John, how did you feel about that? Yeah. You know, and then, uh, Margaret. How'd you feel about that? I mean, it's yeah. like, and they're like, yeah, that was great. Yeah, that was great. But, oh. Was it? That doesn't sound like it was great. That just feels, yeah. yeah but and then, yeah. you know, the confusion of who, and especially because you've just met all these people as well. Right. So it's like, who's talking to me and who's this? And so you just have to, you know, but it was good. It you was like, it was exactly in, what you did. Yeah. To steal yourself. Keep and, pushing through, yeah. you know, and just, yeah. Cause I mean, I'm sure I could have tanked hideously, hideously, but luckily I think, you know, having had years of experience in the world of theatre and having my yeah. own disappointments and struggles right. through that, yeah. I think it was one of those, you know, no, 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 this is the time to show yeah. you're here for a reason. So Every little good. struggle like that makes the next one just a little less dangerous. <laughs> That's right. You know? yeah. yeah. And also that, you know, wow, if I can make it through that, I'm okay, yeah. you know. What's your dream voiceover job? Oh, that's interesting. I don't know, because I feel like I've been so lucky to get stuff already. But I would say there's, there's, the dream would be I would like to be a lead role or very, you know, at the least recurring character on a network animated series in the style of your Butch Hartman style okay, yeah. comedy. Yeah. And then on the flip side of that is I've always had a little dream that I've wanted to be kind of like a Josie and the Pussycats or something like that, whereas, a, a, you know, you're in a girl band <laughs> in the animated series, so then you get to sing <laughs> then the, on yeah, top of that. On top of that. In the band, And yeah. then they release an album. And then they release an album. <laughs> but you're like the that soundtrack. character yeah. playing it. And, yeah. uh, or Jim or, you know, all of those things. I love Josie that. Josie and the Pussycats. Yeah. Oh, my so God. So if those two worlds one. came together... <laughs> I don't know how viable that is, but that would be a dream. But yeah. either one of those two, that's kind of that's great. where I would love to be. Did you go through sort of the experience as an actor? I mean, you're an actor, right, in various areas of, of, of that yeah. big, large profession that it is. Were you ever a waiter, a bartender? What kind of odd jobs did, did you do while trying to get your foot in the door to actually working full-time as an actor other than singing christmas tree other than the singing christmas tree <laughs> which counts which as, does count you know, it's right. sort of a you know an odd job that's right <laughs> well i've had a yes i've had a few of those kind of things i have you know skipped down the streets dressed in an elf costume handing out <laughs> candy God, I've you'd been be there. such a great I help. <laughs> I tell you, it was the best workout exercise. I think I lost like 10 pounds <laughs> those three weeks. So, that, I mean, you know, silly. I think I once dressed up as like the Easter Bunny in a suit and was like, I'm never doing suit work again. Uh, but it's probably m probably the main thing was call centre work. I did okay. a lot of lot of call center helpline kind of stuff not a ton of selling a little bit of selling for a while yeah i worked for a wine company selling wine so that was good fun because we got a free case of wine every month and right on as an educational in quotation marks because <laughs> you can't see the hand gestures yes, i'm doing right. over the microphone <laughs> yeah so call center work so i think again everything i've kind of done has been i made a concerted effort to make sure that whatever I did in the part-time world at least in some way enhanced what I'd been doing all along because otherwise, you know, and that was why the waiter thing I just never clicked with because I kind of was like, well, where is this going to get me right. if I do Except, this? Except, you know, a, a management 
management role, role you know, in a restaurant. Yeah, yeah exactly. Work in the night shift. You know, or maybe I meet someone at a table and yeah. slip in my reel and that's, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> unclassy. But, yeah, so so that was that was the world. But probably dancing elf. Dancing elf is a In full I think elf costume. Yeah. So far, no one has said dancing elf. No, oh, good. That's I'm yours. Good. Thank you. <laughs> With my striped socks yeah. and my little jingly bell shoes. Did you sing? The whole thing. Doing the elf? Or oh, occasionally, because occasionally <laughs> when you'd, could you stand with Santa? Okay. Like I went with Santa. <laughs> you really. Wonderful. I irreverent. could just testify that you would really make a fantastic elf. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. All of you who don't sure. know me. It's the elf <laughs> inside. <laughs> no, but it was. I mean, that. but that goes to that. You just go. I look like a complete fool and so embrace it. Yeah. I love it. And so, yeah. yes, so and that, you did. And it wasn't difficult. <laughs> if you Ever. could name one person who really gave you a leg up in your voiceover career, who might that be? That's, um, that's very difficult because I feel like I've had some incredible people and so I want to name all of them. You Which is everyone too, I've huh? met. Yeah, yeah. Well, people. Everyone I've met. Yeah, everyone I've met. Every experience I've had. Because I'm nervous of letting, leaving people out. But you all know who you are. Um, but but I think I will. I think who I will mention is a gentleman by the name of Sheldon Smith, who's a DC, or was based in DC, voice actor, who when I was building my career in DC, I did a ton of non-union work because mm-hmm. I was originally kind of starting building up, yeah, trying sure. to get the voice of building, uh-huh. a, building a resume, etc. And after a couple of years of doing that, I had come across Sheldon who is kind of had been known, especially in D.C., but subsequently I've come to find in a lot of places around the U.S. as being very, very high up in the industry, uh-huh. both respectfully and career-wise. Uh-huh. And I met him and he was a big champion for me to make a big effort to join the union, Mm -hmm. for one. And then subsequently he got me in touch with Maurice Tobias when I very first moved over here. And I've had incredible coaches as well and I I didn't work a lot with Maurice but I felt like that one-two punch combination Mm -hmm. gave me, A, the confidence and, two, you know, the ability to springboard into Los Angeles. So right. it was leaving DC, meeting Sheldon, and then moving over and kind of first connecting with Maurice that I think really helped me get to where I am and then everyone else in between. But yes. What's the most important lesson that a career in the arts has taught you? I think probably the biggest lesson, I'm terrible, I always want to say two. It's okay, you can I'm say gonna, two. I'm going to say two. <laughs> Um, just trying to get you to narrow it. Sure. From 10 to 2, that's fine. Um, is one is be kind to everyone because you never know a, what other people are going through, why they're acting the way they are and, or on the flip side of that, who they are and how they could champion you in the future. Mm-hmm. And then lesson two, what I've learn is how much ability I have to control my own career and the decisions I make, which is something that I didn't do in when I was doing musical theatre and, and theatre, but just I kind of left it in the hands of everyone else. And I think one of the things that voiceover has taught me is how important business knowledge is in a career, but also just to claim every, you know, success and every non-success as you know as your own and that you have the ability to change that or you have the ability to input enough in order to be able to change that or at least guide towards where you want to go which has been a big lesson for me because I used to just think oh it's everyone else's fault for, that I didn't get to where I was right. until that things I... happen to you and you can't do anything about yeah about it yeah. that's right so... yeah I've found that and talking to people that, and, and also it's my own experience that, you know, there have been dark moments in my career. And, you know, I say in my career, but the, but there are actually sort of dark moments in my life where, where I feel like things just have stalled. And I think, mm. what happened? What happened to the career I had? Or what happened? Why did that thing go away? Or yeah. why why are things not moving? Why are they not? And sometimes it's 
you know, sometimes it's right after sort of a, you know, the catastrophic loss of a job or something. And it just, when you do something like voiceover and it's something that you love, it yeah. can't help but bleed into your sense of yourself. And, you yeah. know, that's sort of the, the cross that actors bear, yeah. you know, um, w without trying to sound, you know, like it's the hardest job in the world. I no, recognize no. that it's not, but it's very much tied to our sense of ourselves and whether or not we're w worthy, you know, as human of beings. Of course. Yeah. And so, um, the stories that I've heard tend to, to be that people switch direction or start a new path after something catastrophic has happened, Yeah, you know, and those are the opportunities for reinvention. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think just based on what you're saying that you take all the crappy stuff along with the good stuff and you have to evaluate them both, yeah. you know, and, um, they both can work to your favor. Exactly. Catastrophes can work to your favor if you choose to view them as opportunities to learn. Well, that's know? right. And then, and if I may <clears throat> add to that, and I know that we've talked about this before, but for, you know, the people that don't know me, which is probably quite a few, but <laughs> is that my, I mean, if I look back, I could say that my whole voiceover career in some way was spurned out or my definitely my life in America was spurned out of what was to me a catastrophic event where I basically gave up theatre and acting altogether because I had tried for so long and again very long story short but I'd been uh, workshopping a musical for a long time and it even moved cities in Australia to you know help with the workshop and then you know the musical took off and it was you know got great acclaim and then a producer came in and said I want to tour this around Australia we're going to take it to the UK and everything and and the writer and and director and and uh, musical director had kind of given me the pat on the shoulder to say oh you know you're in don't worry about it you know yes we all have to audition again because that's the process but you've got it you know so don't stress but then I didn't get it. So I was kind of like, well, if I can create a role and that role was written for me and I'm not good enough to play that, according to this person, what am I doing in this industry? Yeah. And so I quit <clears throat> theatre and I moved back to my parents' house and, you know, and then I met my husband and then moved, well, you know, now husband, moved to the US. But none of, like, being a voice actor or being an actor in the US and in Hollywood was never part of my plan and even as a little girl like I didn't ever have that oh I'm gonna break, grow up and be a Hollywood star you know it was just yeah. kind of like I love acting I always want to be on stage or performing but that wasn't kind of the plan and yet had that not happened had I not given up everything you know eaten my humble pie moved back home spent six months living with my parents because I had no money because I was an out-of-work actor you know all of this stuff I wouldn't be sitting in Hollywood doing a podcast with you now. So, you know, it's like even these things which you think are the end of the world, you know, right. can turn around <clears throat> to be something incredible because to go back to that was that I did suddenly have this realisation that when I went into voiceover, I was like, I'm never listening to other people in, in terms of <clears throat> I'm never evaluating my self-worth based on other people's ideas of my ability or self-worth right and if I'm confident and know I'm a good actor focus on all the people who've said yes you're good yes I'll give you a role yes I'll hire you for a year like I just ignored all those other people and focused my whole decision on this one thing you know so so that was kind of a really good thing yeah. for me to learn and in life generally as well. Yeah. That's a great story when you, you lose something big, you know, I, I just, um, I just watched La La Land Oh, I and um, <laughs> it was pretty sweet. Um, but I, you know, you can't help but focus on the scene where she's just like, I'm going home, right, <laughs> I'm yeah. done, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and things turn around, you know. That's um, right. Sometimes going home is the best thing you the can thing do. To do. Yeah. To go find, to, to go remember to yeah. go remember who you are. That's true. It's like, remember. Remember. <laughs> and in end, <clears throat> embrace the things that make you joyous or give you joy. Yeah. You know, and if that needs to be your family or if that needs to be a friend or if that needs to be a hobby or a career, whatever it is. Right. You got to find your joy first. Be, yeah. yeah. Be joyous in it. If it's, if it's hurting you or killing you, 
and you feel like it's what you're meant to do, then that's fine. Keep pursuing it, but go and fill your life with things that make you happy as well, as incongruous as they may seem, because if you're not happy, you know, I mean, that's a whole. I think that any, I think that this is true for voice actors. It's, it's, it's a little more obvious for on-camera actors mm-hmm. because, you know, you play a character who has a particular life story and yeah. <clears throat> you need on some level to relate to it, to mm-hmm. find that same story in yourself so you can be authentic in the role. But to experience life is the is the point. I mean, I had a writing class for a long time. Jack Grapes teaches a, a fantastic workshop in writing. Mm-hmm. It, whatever kind of writing it is, if you're a poet, if you're a screenwriter, you're a novelist, whatever, um, all the all the principles apply. And many people in our Wednesday morning class, uh, we, we came every quarter. Mm-hmm. So we all got to know each other and Every once in a while, somebody would be missing from the class. And yeah. Jack, we'd say, where's, uh, you know, where's so-and-so? And he'd say, oh, they're, they're out for supplies. And it, it was this sense of, you don't stop writing. It's not like you stop if you're not in class. Yeah. You got to go live. You have to experience the life that you want to, that you want to project and to play in characters, yeah. even cartoon characters, Yeah, you know? And so I just love the whole idea that sometimes when you just can't summon it, you just need to go out for supplies. Yeah. You know, you just got to go true, restore, true, you got to fill the bag back up, yeah. you know, to come in and go, all right, I got my stuff and I'm ready to go and go, you know, back, yeah. and go back to it. But, but not that you've given up, not that you've, but yeah. sometimes you just have to replenish. And I just, I love the image I'm though. Still... I gotta... Yeah, out, that's out clever. For supplies. Out for supplies, just yeah. uh, <clears throat> checking out for a moment. I'll be back. Or and and I think that also su- uh, supplies that also <laughs> applies to you know which you would understand when you like put your heart and soul into getting something and then you find out you didn't get it and someone else did or whatever or you know and and even though you don't care in the sense of you know oh screw her blah blah, blah you yeah. know yeah. not that sure. sort of feeling but yeah. just that. Oh, I really wanted that. That would have been so good. And I've learned how to rephrase that into, you know, from what was me, poor me, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, the, this industry sucks, right? To A, how awesome for her. Boo, I didn't get that. Oh, but what else does that mean that I might get? Because I've had that experience where you don't get that thing you want, but it's because something's so much more incredible happened right, you know right. so it's a really nice that I found that nice rephrase that works and sits with me to be oh I didn't get that because something something else, else is, coming. is coming yeah it might not be tomorrow it might not be for 10 years but but it's coming <laughs> yeah it's coming yeah wherever it comes. there's also that great um I don't know what you call it, but it's just an idea to sort of wrap your wrap your head around mm. that it takes so many no's before you get to a yes. Oh, yeah, and yeah. And so when you get a no, you go, great, there's one. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you sort of like I'm plow on through, way. I'm on my way to yes. Yeah. Every yeah. no gets me that much closer to a yes. Yeah. Which, again, is a way to reframe rejection. Exactly. Which is, you know, we get rejected on most of the things we audition for. Yeah. I mean, that, that's just how it is. Yeah. And so you get to reframe it and then... It's all just, it's just all a part of the experience. That's you know? right. Which I, again, I just find helpful in having all these no's not kind of destroy you. Destroy, oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And or, it happens because, yeah. you know, I feel like, you know, having met you and you've been in this industry for a lot longer and in this, you know, LA, Hollywood, this whole world longer than I have. And that's what I find incredibly inspiring about you and having met you is that, even the people who are the most successful are still getting no's, still getting friends, getting the jobs they want. Yes. And you kind of go, oh, yeah, that's right. It's not, you know, just because you don't hear, you know, how many no's George Clooney is getting. You just assume everything is. But I'm sure there's stuff that, you know, different people have got their heart set on, but they're just not going around advertising it. Right. So, yeah. but that's it. You know, you kind of go, oh, well, Kay's been working forever and she must be getting heaps of stuff and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, Kay's like, no, 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 Clarissa, no, like, no. Like, let, really, me let me just, uh, let me count the no's. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, you know, and then there's ups and downs and sure. ebbs and flows and yeah. it is what it's meant to be right. and work that the best for yourself. So. Yeah.
Exactly. Yeah. Well, we are coming to the end, believe Get it or not. Out. I know. But I have a little questionnaire for you, which oh. uh, comes from the Actors Studio. Oh, interesting. Um, which, as I have said before... Um, May... No, I don't know. What? <laughs> I'd randomly answer. <laughs> don't they do like what's the first word that comes into your head? Right, me, <laughs> me. Yeah, I don't know why it's, it's me. Right. Anyway, it's all right, okay. No, 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 that's, that's okay. <laughs> As I've said before, this comes from James Lipton in the actor studio, and I, I've always, uh, you know, I always watched that show and thought, who's going to ask a voice actor this question? Oh, yeah. Those questions, and I, and okay, it's like, I'm going to do it. Mm. So here I am. I think I've said that on every podcast now, so I think it's going to become my signature line. Okay. I'm going to ask the questions. <laughs> Please. Yes. Okay, so. Okay. Um, Lipped in this. Yes. What is your favorite word? Mate. Uh, Mate, no. <laughs> um, my favorite word to say at the moment is smear. <laughs> smear. I mean, so in my accent, know, smear, yes. smear, smear. Smear is kind of no, I like not as fun. Say smear. It. smear. But my favorite word is currently compassion. What's your least favorite word? <sighs> Exclusion. What turned you on? Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> it could be, I, you know, I asked my daughter this this yeah. list of questions when she asked me. She goes, I want to be on your podcast. So, <laughs> so it was very, it was very great. So I, I didn't say what turned you on to, no, my, oh, to my daughter. Good I said, what, what makes you happy? What makes you happy? So, yeah. So you Same thing. Oh, no, well, on. I would say, uh, honestly, what turns me on is uh, charismatic people. What turns you off? Um, pettiness. Pettiness. What sound or noise do you love? Uh, ocean waves crashing on the shore, 100%. What sound or noise do you hate? Mm, no. <laughs> no, the, someone saying no. Someone saying no is a terrible sound. A sound terrible you. sound for me. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Psychology or therapy, I think. I think so. What profession would you absolutely not want to do? I would never, I think the worst profession in the world is those people who have to stand on the side of the road in an outfit. Spinners. Not, spinners. It's not really, prof is it a profession? Yes. I don't know. But that. It is a profession. Spinning the signs <laughs> and dancing on this, doing that, because I feel like. Didn't you sort of do that as an elf? <laughs> but the difference. <laughs> How dare you? So I was an I was elf. No. Spinning a sign. You no, know. no, but. <clears throat> Being an elf, I got to talk to people. Oh, that's good. And I got to make people happy and give them candy. And, <laughs> you know, I, and I moved. Yes. Like I, prog not progressed, but, you know, moved I about. moved about. And yeah. whereas those people are just standing in one spot. They're not allowed to listen to music. They're not allowed to talk to anyone. There's pollution everywhere. And they're spinning a sign. And they're spinning a sign. And I just feel like. I would just I want hope those that would be, be paid a lot of money. And I, I don't I, think they are. I hope the hourly rate is is pretty good, but mm. how do we know? Anyway, never. Um, <laughs> if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say to you when you arrive at the pearly gates? I don't know if this is it, but the first thing that came into my head was you did good, Larissa Gallagher. Thank you so much for joining me in the hive. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> I've had a lovely time. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Oh. Before we leave, please. Um, oh, where, a bonus. I know a bonus. Monks, I'm sorry. What is it? Monks reward. Yes. yes. Uh, where can people find you? Oh, excellent. Yeah, sorry. Um, that's wow. all right. I was so overcome by your beauty oh, that I forgot to, to say that. I'm sorry. So, that's yes. Right. Um, find me, well, Facebook, which I'm just Larissa Gallagher, I think, but spelled Gallagher, G H E R. I don't go on Facebook a lot, though, so Twitter. more than likely Twitter and Instagram, which are both at Larissa La, L-A-R-I-S-S-A-L-A. -S -S -A -A. Okay. So, like, Larissa Los mm. Angeles. Yes. Sort although, of. technically, it was originally my nickname that people used to call me La, and then I couldn't Larissa be La. at Larissa or at Larissa Gallagher, so... I did Larissa La, and then I moved to LA, and so then it became oh, that's, Larissa LA. Yeah, that's serendipitous. Yeah, so it worked right. out well. But yes, there. Please find me. Instagram, Twitter, are your best bets. Fantastic. Mwah. Thanks for joining me today in the Beehive. For podcast notes, pictures, and more information on my guests, visit the podcast website, thebeehivepodcast.com. Find me at my website, kbest.com. Follow me on Twitter at kbest. 
and subscribe to my channel on YouTube. If you've a mind to, please post a review of the podcast on iTunes. Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and good for the bones. Come back for more Women in VoiceOver next time in the Beehive. Let's